and he asked about the we're Muslims, our obligation is to worship Allah, is to obey Allah. Now, how do we do that without um, knowing what the Islamic law is, the Sharia is? So, is it an obligation for myself or Muslims in general to uh, refer to scholars in all our matters? Some of the brothers are not Arabic, some of them are the Islamic sciences. Um, what is the role of the scholars and how do we access them to worship Allah properly? Okay, now there is many questions in this question. First, uh, let me explain what is scholars. We don't refer to the people of knowledge as scholars. Uh, knowledge, what is knowledge? Uh, when we t talk about knowledge, which is the opposite of one in Arabic language, knowledge is yaqeen, to have, to know something firmly, that is knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa says, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Know that there is no God except Allah. Knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, وَأَن تَقُولُ عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ He mentions some things that, things that are forbidden. قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَا رَبِّيَا Say that Allah, my Lord, has indeed has only forbidden the fawahish, the uh, lewd acts and saying, the apparent and the hidden. And to associate with Allah what He has not ascribed or what He has not uh, given you permission to do to do, like to, to associate with him. And to say about Allah what you don't know. So knowledge here means yaqeen, knowing something firmly. That is knowledge. If you are in doubt about something, that is not knowledge. If you don't know something, uh, firmly, if you have a doubt about it, that is not knowledge. That's why if someone and taqulu and saying things about Allah which you have no knowledge, you understand? So that is ilm, knowledge. And uh, it's not like to guess or to think strongly, uh, be, uh, like uh, you have doubt, but what we call van rajah, strong doubt. Uh, the brother is writing there certainty. Certainty is the knowledge. So that is uh, the knowledge. Now, when we say about, when we talk about knowledge in Sharia, it's only the knowledge that is praised by Allah. The knowledge that Allah has ordered us to acquire is the knowledge of Sharia. Any ayah in the Quran or any hadith talking about knowledge, that is knowledge of Sharia. It's not like you find some people saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, or the Prophet said, ordered us to, or to seek knowledge. And then they will say, medicine, mathematics, physics. No, this is the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't order us to uh, to seek. The knowledge that he ordered us to seek is the, only the knowledge of religion. That is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ يَعْلَمُونَ ظَاهِرًا مِنَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا He said, and Allah fills not his promise. But most of men know not. Most of men, they don't know. After that he says, they know only the outside appearance of the life of the world. So they know the appearance life of the world. But Allah called them, they, they say, he said they don't know. After he said they don't know, he affirmed that they know the appearance, the outside appearance of the life of the world. Matters of their life, the explanation between brackets, which is right here, matters of their livelihood, uh, like irrigating, sowing, or reaping, and I will add to that medicine and physics, and you understand? So this is not knowledge. Knowledge is to know Allah. 
And then when we talk about ulama in the religion as well, it has a different meaning to what many Muslims say as well. When we say alim, it doesn't mean someone who knows the religion. Alim is, if we take it from the Arabic perspective, like the, the, the Arabic language, Alim is anyone who knows something. But definitely, in the religion here, when Allah subhanahu wa says, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَى اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Indeed, only ulama fears Allah. So, who are these ulama? Is it in only ulama fear Allah? Or everybody who fears Allah is alim? This is the, 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 the difference, tafsir that comes on this ayah. Now we say, does every alim, every person who has knowledge about something fears Allah? No. It is the opposite side. Huh? Everybody who fears Allah is alim, no matter how little his knowledge is. He knows that there is no God except Allah. That is knowledge. Even if he doesn't have that much, he doesn't know that much fiqh and hadith, you will find that every hadith that refers to knowledge can be taken this way. That the ulama means those who fear Allah. Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَى اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Let me see the translation because of my bad English. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَى اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ means Astaghfirullah uh, Indeed It is only those who have It is only those who have knowledge among his slaves that fear Allah This is the translation This is one of the tafsir of this ayah It says only those who have knowledge among his slaves that fear Allah According to Ibn Abbas and Ibn Mas'ud, they put it the, wrong, the, the, other, the other way around. They say, those ulama are those who fear Allah, even though they have not made most knowledge, a lot of knowledge of religion. And some people might say, uh, well, there are so many hadith and so many ayat, and why, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I had debates with people and they say no, the, it is the opposite way. Uh, the Prophet, for example, say in the hadith which is in Bukhari and this famous hadith that uh, the uh, Allah will not take the knowledge after he has given it to you, but he take knowledge by taking the ulama. When there is no alim left, people will take heads ignorant as heads, their heads. They will give them fatwa. And they will give them fatwa without knowledge. They will go astray and take people, like lead people astray. This hadith as well is regarding the people who fear Allah. People who don't fear Allah, no matter how much knowledge they have, they still will lead people astray. They shouldn't be taken as heads. I mean, if someone, let's say a leader, who fears Allah and knows that he doesn't know, and people come to him, he will refer him, he will refer them to someone who knows. So he will not lead them astray. And that is alim. If you read the Quran from the beginning to the end, you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he refers to, when he mentions ilm, is all about fearing Allah. Surah Al-Baqarah, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ اللَّهَ And fear Allah, and Allah will teach you. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ اللَّهَ Surah, this is at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. In Surah Al-Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as well, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ اللَّهَ uh, so be afraid of Allah and Allah teaches you. Of course, how does Allah teaches you? If uh, if you fear Allah, Allah will teach you how to fear. Uh, if, you, if you fear Allah and keep your duty to Allah, 
and you go towards Allah, Allah will teach you how to fear Him. Of course, if you fear Allah, you will seek the knowledge. Or, if you are where there is enough people of knowledge, who have knowledge, then if you fear Allah, you will go to them. I hope that you are getting my point. The other uh, ayah here, uh, in Surah, just after Surah Al-Baqarah, there is this ayah that's in Surah Ali Imran. Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illa huwa wal malaika. That Allah testifies. Allah bears witness that la ilaha, that la ilaha illa huwa. There is no, no one has the right to be worshipped but he. And the angels and those having knowledge. Hmm? It's only Allah, the Malaika, and those having knowledge that testifies that La ilaha illallah. So, what about the rest of the Muslims? The rest of Muslims are included, are those who have knowledge. Everybody who says La ilaha illallah is a person who has knowledge. And when we hear these people who say the ulama, huh? When it's very important to know who is the ulama huh? because you, you, you hear this now we had these pe previous people the mujtahideen the fuqaha it was for madahib and now it has uh, some people came to us and said no there is no for madahib it is a bid'ah uh, we have to follow Quran and Sunnah and said, we said yeah it's right we have to follow Quran and Sunnah uh, just for them to come back and say, yeah, for Quran and Sunnah, uh, according to the understanding of three people who are living today and know everything. And then they will use the same ayat and the same hadith that the previous people have used before to stop people from looking at the Quran and Sunnah and understanding the Quran and Sunnah. Those ayahs are... Uh, those ayahs, now there is a hadith, for example, that you will say, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of dhikr if you don't know. This is the ayat that they use. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Is'alu ahl al-dhikr in kutum la ta'alamun. If you don't know. What if I know? So not I know everything, no. What I will ask ahl al-dhikr about something that I don't know. I will go and ask ahl al-dhikr. Now, if this matter I know, I know it. Why should I ask ahl al-dhikr? It's only if you don't know it. And who are Ahl al-Dhikr as well? What is Dhikr? Dhikr is Quran and Sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَزَّلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ We send down the Dhikr to you so you can explain to people what has been revealed to them. So the Dhikr here is the Sunnah. Whether you say it is the Sunnah to explain Quran, which is definitely right, or you say the Quran to explain the previous books, if the previous books can be called dhikr, then definitely the sunnah of the Prophet can be called dhikr as well. Why not? <coughs> you understand? We believe that everything that came from Allah, whether the previous books, whether the actual books, all of these are dhikr. And we find here we can notice some problem here when these people refer this ayah dhikr, for example, they will say فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Someone comes to you and say, we have to go to the, to the scholars. Allah says فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And if you try to use this ayah uh, somewhere else, and if you go to the books of tafsir, they will say this ayah actually it was revealed for the Quran being explaining the books, previous books. أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ here actually is not meant to be the ulama, it's the people of the book. So is it this or this? No, it is all of them. The people of the book are Ahl al-Dhikr and we are Ahl al-Dhikr. Every Muslim is Ahl al-Dhikr. Every Muslim who has memorized an, an ayah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen when he memorized this ayah he is Ahl al-Dhikr. Anyone who accepts Quran and Sunnah is Ahl al-Dhikr. And Allah ordered us to ask Ahl al-Dhikr about the things that we... You go to Ahl al-Dhikr and ask them about the Dhikr. You understand? When you ask Ahl al-Dhikr, you ask them about the Dhikr. You don't ask about something. Allah said Ahl al-Dhikr. You don't go to Ahl al-Dhikr and ask them about something else. It's like when I tell you... You see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُؤْذُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لعنهم الله في الدنيا والآخرة. 
those who hurt or harm Allah and his prophet Allah will curse them in the dunya and in the akhirah now you see when the prophet had problem with his wives to the point that he left them and he spent one month away from them it looks like he was hurt can we apply this ayah on the wives of the prophet no we can't why because they didn't hurt the prophet they hurt their husband it's the matter between them and their husband you see when i tell you uh, we don't have any other relation to the prophet so we can't we have only have the respect for him we can say nothing like one of the his wives will get angry and maybe tell him uh, go away or i don't want to see you or something you understand <laughs> we don't have that relation with him to you to have that kind of talk with him you see when allah Hadda says inna ma ja'ila al-imam liyu'tamma bih the imam is made to be followed now you follow the imam and then when he does the salam do you follow him go with him home do you know you understand do you do what he does after the salam the prayer is finished he is imam as long as it's prayer after the prayer you might call him imam but he's not anymore you understand you can just say imam like the one who was imam during the prayer so <clears throat> same thing with ahl al-dhikr it's Everybody is Ahl al-Dhikr because we have a dhikr. But when I come to you for a specific, when I come to you ask you about wudu, if you have an answer for the wudu, you have hadith from the Prophet, you have an ayah from the Quran that speaks about wudu, then you are Ahl al-Dhikr that I am supposed to come to. If not, then you go to someone else. He is Ahl al-Dhikr. Umar ibn Khattab or ibn Abbas or Abu Hanifa or Malik or Shafi'i all these people this applies to them there are things ibn Abbas knew a lot and ibn Umar knew a lot also ibn uh, Shafi'i and Ahmed ibn Hanbal and ibn Hazm and ibn Taymiyyah they knew a lot but they didn't know everything and where they don't know they are not supposed to say anything the fact that they know a lot doesn't give them the right to talk about the things that they don't know and if someone who doesn't know that much but he was in a mosque he stayed there and he heard a lesson and he understood it properly then he has all right to give fatwa regarding that matter he is ahl al here we have some Sahaba who heard many hadith, for example, like Ibn Abbas, like Ibn Umar, and we heard some Sahaba who knew one hadith, two hadith. <coughs> now, when you go to this, when you go to this, uh, when you want to uh, ask about an issue, and you know that Ibn Abbas doesn't know it, you go to this Sahabi who is who knew this hadith, even though he is not that famous. If you look at the issue of ulama and alims and uh, you look at this you will see that in the time of the prophet and everybody says uh, they bring all this hadith that we have been mentioning that only one group will go will, will be saved from hellfire the group who will be in the same have the same status like they will have the same state they will be in the same uh, doing what I am and my companions doing at the time of the Prophet can you tell me who amongst the Sahaba was the Bushtahideen and who were the ignorant ones there wasn't they all were Mujtahideen <coughs> all were Alims they all fear Allah to everybody's certain level not everybody is like Abu Bakr or Omar there are other Sahaba who fears Allah enough to leave their tribes and become Muslim and to get enmity with their people. Maybe not not, not as strong Iman as Abu Bakr and Umar, but still they were Alims. And uh, they were 
talking about the things that they know. And then when they go to the Prophet, and that is the same religion that has not changed yet, it has not changed, and it's not supposed to be changed. You see when those people say, oh, you read Quran, even though you have studied Arabic and you know Arabic, you will read Quran, it is forbidden for you to act on it. Until you go to a alim and take approval from him. But always we advise people that when you read Quran, go and see all the sayings. You never know, you might see something and find that some people have seen something that you, you didn't realize. You understand? It's better to go and see what other people have said. Sometimes you, you read an ayah, you understand it in a way, but then when you look at <coughs> other people's understanding, you will realize that your understanding is wrong. Sometimes. Sometimes your understanding may be the right one. Despite people before you have had different understanding, and you are, they never thought about what you thought. And that's why Allah ordered us not to Ibn Abbas only, to everybody to reflect on reading Quran. If the Quran have been, the tafsir have been done and the religion finished, everybody, the, the, the ulama have given the answer for everything, why reflecting Quran? Read it for barakah. What are you going to, to get from reflecting the Quran? So, this, uh, if we talk, look at the time of the Sahaba, we will find that there was the Sahaba and there was some people who probably don't have, don't deserve the name Sahabi. Uh, you can't call them kafir or hypocrites, but Allah described them in Quran that Al Arabu Ashiddu Kufran wa Nifaqa, the Arab, the Bedouins, are more likely to be kafir or hypocrites. Al Arabu أشد كفرا ونفاقا وأجتر أن لا يعلم حدود ما أنزل الله على رسوله that the Arab the what we call the Bedouins are the worst in disbelief and hypocrisy this is generally and more likely to be in ignorance of the limits which Allah has revealed to his messenger and he said as well that and of the Bedouins, there are some who believe in Allah and the last day. And look open what they spend in Allah cause as means of nearness to Allah and a cause of receiving the messenger and vocations. This is the Arab, how Allah described them. Still, this Arab, when they come to the Prophet, the Prophet will tell them something. He will tell them what is obligation on them, what is forbidden on them. And he will not tell them, okay, now that I have told you, you are not mushtahid. You are just ignorant people that Allah has spoken about in this way, in the Quran. You people shouldn't take my statement just like that. Go find the Ali, find Ibn Abbas, find Umar ibn Khattab, let him explain to you. The Prophet never said that. In the, in the contrary, Allah subhanahu wa criticized the people who, when they hear the Prophet's statement, they will go and try to, to seek other opinions. Allah subhanahu wa says, and among them are some who listen to you. Till when they go out from you, they say to those who have received the knowledge, what has he said just now? Such are men whose heart Allah has sealed and they follow their lust. At the time of the Prophet, this is what used to happen, is Allah, uh, the Prophet will, people will come to the Prophet and ask questions, he will answer them. The Sahaba have told us <coughs> what the Prophet have answered. So they are there. You can look at it, provided that you are an Arab or someone who have studied Arabic. The Quran and the Sunnah are in Arabic. The religion is not Arabic, but the Quran and Sunnah is Arabic. So you have to learn to read the Arabic. If you don't, then you will be relying on other people understanding. 
and still you are following someone. I mean, but if you know the Arabic language, then it's open for everybody, anytime, to try to understand the religion. And everybody is a person who is who can be called be from a mujtahid, what we call a mujtahid. Anybody is supposed to be a mujtahid, what we call mujtahid mutlaq. Not need to go anywhere else. Like he will look at the religion and say his opinion uh, regarding this matter based that he fears Allah and he try, doesn't try to play with the religion, of course. Anyone who says uh, something different to this, he contradicts himself. You see the people who said after the four madahib, there is no ishtihad. This person here, you tell him, what, what do you mean by what you are saying? He will say, I mean that nobody is supposed to say anything after the four madahib, except if one of the imams have said it. Then we put the question for him, what you are saying now, who, which imam have said it? And then when he says that nobody have said it before, we say, okay, you are a mujtahid now. You are telling people don't do ishtihad, you are trying to deny people what you are doing. Because to say to people don't do ishtihad, finish, you are stopping people from doing something that Allah ordered them. This is a very big matter. You are telling people you shouldn't talk about wudu unless you can prove that one imam have said it before. And then you are talking about such big matter that nobody has spoken about before you. You come with the fatwa that nobody has said before you. People like Abu Amr ibn Salah, for example, when he say any hadith that have been considered to be sahih before him, then it is sahih, any hadith that was da'if is da'if, any hadith that have, nobody said is sahih or da'if finish, we better just put it in the middle. It's neither sahih or neither. You understand? No ishtihad after this. Okay, where did you get this from? This is his ishtihad. Why you have the right to do ishtihad, other people don't have this right. Can I just ask you? Um, if we refer to the time of Umar bin Khattab, yeah, he gave certain Sahabi permission to narrate hadith. Yeah. Now he obviously was. Um, he made sure that there were witnesses, and he verified those hadith. But he only allowed a certain number of hadith to be narrated. Now he only went to hand full of people who had background knowledge and were trustworthy. Yeah. Now, he didn't allow a vast majority of the Sahabi, so doesn't that show that there is some form of um, scholarship understanding Probably. that the Sahabi needs to have? I don't know what you are saying. What I know, Umar al Khattab, first, Umar al Khattab, I told you before, we consider Umar al Khattab to be the most knowledgeable person in this Ummah after the Prophet. For the hadith that the Prophet said, that if there is in this Ummah someone who will get, uh, uh, not revelation, uh, inspiration, ilham. Uh, ilham, yeah, then it will be Umar ibn Khattab. And he, in his dream, he saw that he has was given milk, he drank his fill, and then he gave the leftover to Umar. Uh, of course, uh, I understand what uh, the uh, some people say. How can you say that, uh, for example, Omar is the most knowledgeable person uh, when uh, Abu Bakr is better than him? Abu Bakr is better, but better is not necessarily mean most knowledgeable. Like the three generations are better, so they must be most knowledgeable of religion. That also a very important issue here doesn't mean three most three generations are when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the Prophet says that Khairun Nasi Qarni the best 
people are my generation than those who comes after than those who come after better doesn't mean more knowledgeable hmm? unless you mean here knowledge which is the fear of Allah you understand and in the Sharia we, fear, we refer to knowledge as fearing of Allah but the knowledge the understanding the fiqh it's not limited to the best person if you tell me what is the proof I will tell you what is your proof that is it's the opposite hmm? that is a best person why don't you say the best person is the most strongest person who can fight jihad you understand uh, Abu Bakr was not as strong as Ali ibn Abi Talib in, in war neither Uthman you understand uh, they still these two people these two individuals are stronger than Ali ibn Abi Talib my proof that the best is not the most knowledgeable is the, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran about Musa Ya Musa inni istafaytuka ala nasi bi risalati wa bi kalami O oh Musa, I have chosen you above people with my risala, with my message messages and with my talk, with my speech he spoke to him directly there is not many prophets to whom Allah has spoken. Musa is one of the greatest, five greatest prophets. But when he was asked about this question, who is the most knowledgeable? And he said, me. Allah said, no, there is someone who is more knowledgeable than you. That is Khadr. And Khadr can't be compared to Musa. For the fact that Allah in Quran says, Ya Musa, I have chosen you above people. Since he is not better than the Prophet وسلم, Muhammad, then he is better at, we say he is better than the people he was living with in that time. And the Khadr was in that time. And this hadith is in Bukhari. So Musa is the best, but he is not the most knowledgeable. There is Khadr. And if you disagree with this, you disagree with the Prophet. This is hadith that I am mentioning. And the Prophet told the Sahaba, the best generation, in Hajjat al Wada'ah. Those who are present here should transmit the message, convey the message to those who are not. Those who are there are the Sahaba. Those who are not, some of them might be other Sahaba, some of them will be Tabi'in. And the best Sahaba, the most knowledgeable Sahaba were there. Abu Bakr was there, Umar was there, Uthman was there, Ali was there. Bin Umar was there, Bin Abbas was there, Abu Huraira was there. Any name that you know of the Sahaba. Was, were there. Still the Prophet said, because some who are not present might comprehend what I have said better than those who are present. So being the best doesn't mean being the most knowledgeable. Going back to your question, what did That's what I mean, like you said that you don't know what I'm talking about, but it's a widespread understanding from quite a few people mm. that Umar al Khattab allowed certain yes. people yes. to speak about that. Tarif. Umar al Khattab allowed some people. We know that Umar al Khattab was very. Look, Umar al Khattab is the most knowledgeable. We don't argue about this. Does he know everything? No. Does he get right every time? No. Actually, the Prophet told him an ayah. This is hadith in Bukhari. He said the Prophet, I didn't ask I didn't ask the Prophet <coughs> about something the way I asked him about the Kalala, someone who dies and has doesn't leave behind a father, grandfather, doesn't leave children. So he asked the Prophet, I said I didn't ask him anything except the way I asked him about this matter. And he said the Prophet like he kept repeating and explaining to him. He said, until one time he pushed me in the, in the, in the chest and said, Takfika ayatul sayf. The ayah of the uh, summer is enough for you. Until Hafsa said, Oh Allah Prophet, leave him. Wallah, by Allah he will never understand it. Umar al Khattab died on the, his bed when he was dying. He said, I wish that the Prophet explained it more. And definitely the Prophet explained it more. The religion, the Prophet came to explain everything. 
but this is the most knowledgeable person he has a little knowledge our knowledge is even less than his knowledge doesn't mean that and everybody agrees about this no matter everybody who tells you ah oh, what are you saying about Omar what are you saying about Ibn Abbas just give him something tell him Ibn Abbas if he is from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah tell him do you say that marriage marrying a woman uh, for, for a period limited period is it right when he says wrong tell him who are you to answer Ibn Abbas you have made a decision so you have the right to 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 talk just based on nothing probably this person these people normally who talk like this are people who have never studied because people who understand people who read books they will understand that this this matters is not like just like that I mean mostly the people who are like people who have never studied people who take the religions from leaflets rather than books if you read the, the books you will see that the the, the 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 matters that have been discussed I mean there is no matter that Muslims have not discussed except that the fact that there is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasul. But this is the matter that people, if you start discussing it, you are not a Muslim. So, as of Umar ibn Khattab, if he said this, if he said, if he limited people to not to say hadith, which we don't know, like we really, there isn't many hadith that says this. We know that Umar ibn Khattab, for example, uh, he uh, didn't agree with Fatima bin Tuqais. When Fatima bin Tuqais, for example, said that uh, the, the the person that who divorces three times that the woman has no right no nafaka no uh, housing Umar al-Khattab said we are not going to follow a woman who has for who uh, uh, and leave the book of Allah a woman who might have forgotten and leave the book of Allah we know that for example the hadith which is in Bukhari when Abu, Sa'id al when Abu Musa al-Ash'ari came to Umar and asked for permission to enter and then Abu Sa'id al uh, then uh, he, he asked for permission three times and he left then when he asked later why he did, he, he did, he did that he mentioned the hadith of the Prophet that uh, if, if someone asked for permission three times and then that istidhan is three times asking for permission is three times if you don't get permission then leave when he, Abu Musa said this, he said, and he doesn't have any doubts about Abu Musa, but this is his madhab. He sought someone to, uh, to help, to like another witness to testify that the Prophet have said this. And he sent Abu Sa'id Khutli, who was the youngest amongst the people, to testify that the Prophet have said this. We know this. We know, for example, that Umar al Khattab. Uh, contradicted Ammar ibn Yasir in the, uh, in the Tayammum, he has forgotten. And we know that uh, Ammar ibn Yasir, when he was uh, saying some hadith, Umar ibn Khattab, for example, said, Watch yourself what you are saying. He said, Oh, Amir al Mu'minin, if you want me, I am not going to talk about it. He said, La, we, we, we leave you with what you have chosen. It's between, like, it's between you and Allah. It's not like Umar ibn Khattab. Uh, if you say Umar ibn Khattab was telling people don't say hadith, no. It wasn't Umar ibn Khattab. He didn't do it and he shouldn't do it. How can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order us to transmit, the, to convey the message of the Prophet and the Prophet say the same thing and someone can't stop you? If he, may, if he did it, then he was wrong, but he didn't. And if someone says Umar used to do or Abu Bakr used to do, this is the thing that we don't accept. If you say something, refer us, tell us where. You see this hadith that I just mentioned? The hadith of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, which hadith I mentioned earlier? Was yes, Ammar bin Yasir. The hadith of Ammar bin Yasir, which other hadith? Uh, before that I mentioned all the hadith. This hadith is in Bukhar. You go and find it. You understand? So if someone says, just uh, like Umar used to do, where? Well, I mean, this is on my perspective, but... Yeah. You have those, primarily from the Shia mm. uh, perspective, they will say, well, he beat up um, uh, Abu Huraira, for example, yeah. excessively, yeah. because he was narrating hadith. Yeah, he beat up Abu Huraira excessively, that is, uh, the Shia, we discuss with them in a different way. I mean, when they say that he beat up Abu Huraira, 
that is a lie. We know that there is hadith that uh, Abu Bak, uh, that Umar beat up Abu Huraira, uh, which this hadith needs really looking, even though it is in in, in the Sahih. When he, the Prophet sent him to give glad tidings to people who says La ilaha illallah, uh, this hadith is known. Uh, however, he beat Abu Huraira after uh, the Prophet. That is a lie, because actually he sent Abu Huraira to teach people religion in Bahrain, and he had the whole respect to for Abu Huraira. Umar al-Khattab was a very harsh person. But uh, so the story there was him with his Dura is just a fabrication. The, pre- the fact that Abu uh, Umar al-Khattab used to go to the mosque and see some people like doing something that he doesn't agree with, and he used to use his stick to beat them, uh, it's true. Uh, but uh, he was not. He had the respect, especially to those people who were close to the Prophet, like Abu Huraira, like Anas ibn Malik, like Ibn Abbas. Uh, you understand? So, like Abu Ayyub al Ansari uh, lifting uh, his stick against some people or something, he, he used to do it sometimes. He was harsh, yes. And probably the Prophet pra- praised him for his way in ruling. He was a ruler. Hmm? And the Prophet said uh, that he saw a dream in which he was in front of a well and then he took buckets of water. Then he gave Abu Bakr after him, and then it was he was weak in his taking. Then he gave it to Umar. He has never seen someone a genius. Hmm? He didn't see someone he, what he has Umar has done. Uh, that is uh, the people that allegedly he used to beat are the people who liked him too much. Hmm? It was. Uh, what Umar al Khattab used to do is to go against the Muqtadis, the people who do bid'ah, people who talk about things, talk about things that are, for example, this is with it comes with Isnad Sahih, that for example he heard a man to, uh, saying the stories uh, that are not from Quran, and he beat him, he beat him and he threw him out of Medina. Actually, he made him go out of Medina where he can't meet anybody. And he can't talk to anybody. This man was allowed only for Medina to get food and keep away from people because he, this person was not like bringing things that are weird. You understand? Things that are not from the religion. He was not discussing wudu. He was not discussing what is an obligation, salah, what is haram. He was, even though the hadith doesn't say what is it, Probably he was saying stories about prophets that doesn't exist, or probably he was discussing the sifat of Allah, whether uh, saying that Allah is like a human being, like some people say, or saying that Allah is in the sky and everybody who says the opposite is a kafir, or probably he was saying Allah is everywhere and anybody who says the opposite is a kafir, or whatever. These kind of things. The way to deal with them is not to discuss them. The way to deal with the person like this is uh, to to beat him properly and send him to exile or put him in prison until he learns his lesson. This is yeah because this is the matters that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has forbidden us to discuss. This is the the matters mutashabihat. How do you know? What do you know? We know Allah, and we believe whatever He says. If He says this tawa al arsh, we say tawa al arsh. No need for philosophy in here. Uh, if he says he is in the heaven, we say he is in the heaven. If he says he is with you wherever you are, we say he is with us wherever we are. If he says, if you turn your face wherever you turn your face, he is there, we say he is there. You understand? We don't accept that someone comes and say, uh, no, this is he is with you with his knowledge. We say, okay, if he is with us, what do you say about this knowledge? Is it something... What is this knowledge? Is it something other? You are saying Allah and His knowledge? So Allah is not with us, but His knowledge is with us. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He says everything will perish except Him, His face. You got the point? Absolutely. 
Yeah, so this, I am not, I'm just giving you a point to understand that this, you shouldn't talk about it. Even the way I'm saying it now, this is just to say that don't get befooled, neither by this group, neither by the other group. Hmm? I mean, this is matters that you read Quran and you believe in it. We don't, clear, we don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't, Laysa Kamitli Shay, there is nothing like comparable to him, nothing like him. So this is not the matters, the matters that you are going to, you are supposed to discuss is what is knowledge, what is ishtihad, what is the source of knowledge, uh, doing the prayer, doing the zakah, doing the fasting, this is the, what we are concerned about. What is an obligation? How to be one nation despite having even because even those people who say this, who we are against, they are still Muslims. We have to put them in one category. Are they Muslims or kafir? No, they have not yet said anything that put them as kafir. They are not kafir, so they are Muslims, and we are not Mu'tazila who deal with people. There is kafir and there is Muslim and there is in between, like some people. When dealing with Muslims, there is a Muslim, that group, and then there is a Kafir, the Christian and the Jewish, and, and there is this Muftadi'ah, what they call Muftadi'ah in the middle. And they don't know that by doing this, they became a group of Muftadi'ah. This is the saying of the Mu'tazila. <coughs> there is no in group. There is a group what's called the Munafiqeen, the hypocrites. But this is our Kafir in the inside and they are show the signs of believers and we treat them as Muslims until we can see clearly that they are Kafirs. So yeah, so we go back to the subject when Umar al-Khattab used to limit the scholarship to, of course, a leader has a duty. Now if we see someone, if you see someone that he is a uh, crazy, mentally unfit. And there are some people who are mentally unfit. Uh, I mean, sick in the head. And anybody, they hear any story, they follow it. Anybody can come and uh, you go to Hyde Park Corner, people will say every weird thing. And everybody will have people listening to him. <coughs> If we see someone like this and we see that he is sick, mentally sick, then we have to have a restraining order to take him to a hospital. You understand? We don't allow him. Even though it will be a waste of time, only crazy people like him who... But we don't use this like just against anybody. Say this person is qualified, this person is not qualified. You understand? People. As long as a person is talking from Quran and Sunnah, we have to let people talk what they know, to say what they know. And if someone, uh, if you are not afraid, I will be, I will say we shouldn't, I will tell people don't go and listen to these people or these people, only on one reason. If I am afraid that they will go there, he will tell them something and they won't have no answer for it. And because I am too much into what I believe for other reasons than seeking the pleasure of Allah, then I will be threatened. But if I want to be a Muslim and I have nothing to hide, that's fine. You go there, listen, go to anybody, hmm, with a, to any group, to any sheikh, listen what they are saying and come back. We will discuss it. If it's better what we ha than what we have, we will take it. That's what we are looking for. We are looking for right things. If it's not, then I will explain it to you. I will explain to you that what you heard there is wrong. <coughs> Understand? So, uh, we were supposed to study, to talk about knowledge and ishtihad, but I can't take out of my mind the fact that there is a new group today. <laughs> You understand? I am uh, I'm talking, I'm not thinking about Ibn Salah now. I'm looking at, uh, talking, uh, thinking about the, this new group that we, that you know of. 
far. Okay, there is a question on the issue of um, everyone can, everyone should, and everyone can make a shihad. Yes. Now, if someone knows a handful of ayat, mm. or they know a handful of hadith, mm. um, is it not dangerous for someone who has little knowledge, mm. but they don't have the the overall picture of what Allah is trying to say? Yeah. Now, if they are quoting. Um, a hadith, they may be misquoting and giving a wrong fatwa. Now, isn't that dangerous? Little knowledge is dangerous. It is uh, to say, to come and say something is haram or halal. This is not the right way for someone who is a beginner, who have not studied properly. It is uh, not the way also that neither the Sahaba, neither their followers, neither even the Imams of the former Zahib or even though the, there is nothing special about them, they were, there is many people who could have a time of the four Imams who are better than the four Imams. But these people didn't choose to say, this is haram, this is halal. They used to say, if you ask someone about something, he will say, uh, specifically this matter is what we call furur. They will say this, is, this is what the Prophet said. Mostly, they say, I don't like it, I like it, I hate it, you understand? But the best way to talk about matters of religion is, uh, you say, it is likely to be for the hadith that says, if you do that, that's fine. If you think that there is someone who has more knowledge about it from you in this matter, you should refer to, the per the person, to, to that person. Understand? If you are able to grab a book and this book will have different opinions and tell you uh, different opinions so you can read the opinions and come to a conclusion, you should do that. Ishtihad, what is Ishtihad? Ishtihad is to, uh, according to the uh, definition of the majority, which is taken from the Arabic language, is doing your utmost to get to the right the right decision. That is ishtihad in the Arabic language. Allah says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Those who do jihad in our way, for us, for our sake, for his sake, we will guide them to the right path. So, jihad is not only fighting. Jihad is to, from ishtihad, word ishtihad, to do your utmost, the best you can. The Prophet said in the hadith, إِذَا حَكَمَ الْحَاكِمُ فَاشْتَهَدَ فَأَصَابَ فَلَهُ, أجر فله أَجْرًا if the Hakim, and do you look at this word here, it's not if the Alim, if the Hakim, a jurist, a decision maker, if he does Ishtihad, and if he does, a, he makes a decision, and in making a decision, he does his utmost Ishtihad, and then he gets it right, he will get the rewards. If he does his utmost, when making his ishtihad, looking for the right for the right hukum, and he gets wrong, he will get one reward. This is ishtihad. This ishtihad is an obligation on every single person of the ummah to do his the best of his ability. Ibn Abbas, as one of the <coughs> greatest people of knowledge. Umar al Khattab as definitely a alim. If you call Umar al Khattab alim, there is no harm about that. Why? Because Umar al Khattab is a alim. Because Umar al Khattab is in Jannah. Because he is in Jannah, that means he fears Allah. So to say he is alim is not, you are not doing something haram. Like to say someone is, uh, to, to praise someone that Allah didn't praise, it will be wrong. But to praise Umar al Khattab is not wrong. Because Allah praised him. Now, Umar al Khattab and Ibn Abbas, with their knowledge, 
if something, if they need to know about something that they have never heard about the Prophet, their utmost, Umar al-Khattab will call the people of Badr, gather them, and ask them. This is his, his mujtahid, no? He is a mujtahid. That is his istihad. He called the people of Badr. Do you know anything about this matter? And then the people, the Ansar, the people of the, the Bay'at Radwan, they call people and they ask them. This is his ishtihad. And uh, the ishtihad of Ibn Abbas here, or any other tabi'i or sahabi who can understand something, why does he go, need to go and call again? I mean, he will be there, he will give the answer to Umar al-Khattab. That is his ishtihad. He doesn't need to spend any or more time looking for, to search about the matter. He already knows it from the Quran and Sunnah. I mean, the definition of ishtihad, they give you one definition of ishtihad and then when they apply it, it's something different. Ishtihad is like, oh, looking at the ayah. Look at this ayah that they use for ishtihad. About ishtihad, some people think that ishtihad is to go and read the ayah and rather than taking the apparent, they will read between the lines. <coughs> you understand? They will find the answer between the, not the lines of Quran, in between the lines of Quran. Some people think that is ishtihad. You understand? That is not. And they use this ayah here, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran. Uh, the ayah in the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and, where, and there comes to them, when, when there comes to them some matter touching public safety or fear, they make it known among the people. If only they had referred it to the messenger and to those charged with authority amongst them, of course here you say, Ulil Amr, and some people say, Ulil Amr is ulama, but here Ulil Amr is the truth, is, means the charge of, with authority, referring when something, a matter comes, you have to refer it to the Prophet when he was alive or refer it to the people of Ulil Amr, the Ulil Amri Minkum, of course, the, the leaders of the Muslims. Say, if they had referred it to the messenger or to those charged with authority among them, the proper investigators will have, would have understood it from them directly. Then, now, these proper investigators, this is the ayah that people say, this is, that means people shouldn't go and do ishtihad themselves. They have to refer it to a special investigators. Now, if we take Asbab al-Nuzul, the reason why this ayah was revealed, according to Umar ibn Khattab, he was in his place, out of Medina, in the Awali. His brother, not real brother, the brother as Muhajir and Ansari, someone from Bani Umayyah, he came to him, no, he was in Bani Umayyah, Sorry, in Awali, uh, his brother uh, came to him, not real brother, he came to him and said, the Prophet have, has divorced his wives. He said, I took my cloak, my rida, I went to the Prophet, I asked for permission, I answered to the Prophet and asked him, did you divorce your wives? He said, no. This is the investigation. This is the ayah that people say <laughs> that, oh, you go and do qiyas and do, and look in the reading between the lines and some specific, what did Umar al-Khattab do, do here? What any other Muslim could, sh couldn't have done or shouldn't have done? Exactly what Umar al-Khattab has done here is to, uh, what any Muslim will do, go to the right, to the source and get uh, the answer. You understand? Jihad as we understand it, Ijtihad as we understand it, is this. That everybody does his best. When something, so a matter comes, and you need to make a decision in it, you do what you can. Now, if you already know the matter, there is nothing else you can do. If you don't know this matter and you are someone who have, Allah has given him 
understanding you have looked you knew that you know that you have understanding you can understand matters then you go and open the Quran and read it if you know for example hadith you know how to uh, find hadith sahih or know what is hadith is sahih which hadith is daif strong hadith and weak hadith then you can look at that as well make your decision this is hadith sahih or not and include it in your search if you are not able to do that then your ishtihad is to contact the people who have this knowledge and they will tell you the people that you trust we have for example someone like Shafi'i he was people call him mustahid mutlaq and we believe that he was a mujtahid of course he didn't know much about man and he will tell Ahmed bin Hanbal I sometimes use some hadith that maybe you will disagree with if you see me relying on a man which you think is not strong then let me know this is on the Masail of Ahmed so this is his ishtihad there are some people who have not don't have that degree uh, they can not understand they don't know hadith and they don't have good understanding but if they hear so a matter if they hear something they can understand it they can't think themselves but they can he can hear this <coughs> the saying of Shafi'i and he can hear the verdict of Malik with and then he look at their proofs and then he can decide that this is more likely this is more likely to be the hukm of Allah and he will make his decision based on that that is a mujtahid he is lesser degree than what Shafi'i is doing hmm? and there is someone who is not at all I mean he will you will talk to him talk 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 and then he will he will say I can see the difference between what you are saying someone is saying this is haram and someone is saying this is halal and he can say I, I can't see the difference at all I mean I don't know what you what you mean just tell me clearly should I do it or not this is what his best but he knows that he has to worship Allah and therefore he is obliged to go and search for the right person a person who will not lie to him a person who will not cheat him traveling from Shepherd's Bush for example to Acton or to Wembley or to because for example in the area where you are there is not no one that you trust or you rely on traveling this is your ishtihad someone some people don't have that much knowledge he will take his donkey and travel for three months just to find the person who will tell him this is halal or haram this is a very big mujtahid this is a big mujtahid bigger than the person who is sitting on his sofa and people asking question and this halal I like it this haram I don't like it you understand so this is this guy is the guy who took his donkey and traveled for three months just to know whether Allah likes this or not so he can see if he, he does it or not this person will get the two rewards the other will not can I just clarify a point which from what you're saying it mm. seems like a slight misconception it is it is said that to perform ishtihad yeah it's not on what is already in the Quran or the Sunnah for example alcohol is haram there is no ishtihad needed yeah because it's clear yeah. However, ishtihad is only on a subject. Yeah, that is because some people understand ishtihad in a different way. Well, let me just. Yeah. So, so what they say is, if there is a new issue, so for example, in the time of the Prophet, there was no test tube babies. Yeah. We didn't have airplanes or internet. Hmm. So they say that the process of ishtihad, okay, is in three steps. Yeah. They say, first of all, you look at the waqia, you look at the reality, hmm. you exert all your efforts and you analyze that reality. So the example that is commonly given is that if you look at a liquid, it is transparent. Hmm. You have to analyze, is it H2O, is it ethanol, is it methanol, is it some other liquid? Once you have studied the waqia hmm. of the subject, yes. then you go to the text. Okay. If there is nothing in the text which explicitly covers that, then, as you said, you find the nearest evidence or ayat or yeah. a hadith and then yeah, yeah. once you essentially make 
uh, a marriage between the two, you have ahkam, you have yeah. fatwa. No, that is uh, weird. This is something that, yeah, this is what you find in the books. Of this Fatwa. is what you find we, in mainstream. We believe that everything is covered in Quran and Sunnah. Everything is covered in Quran and Sunnah. The Prophet said that the Prophets before, there is no Prophet that except that Allah has given him the ayat <coughs> signs that because of this ayat that he was followed by people. And what Allah has given me is wahi, revelation. And I hope that with this wahi, I will have more followers than ever, than anybody else. This book is the book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا يَأْتُونَكَ بِمَثَلٍ They don't come to you with an example, إِلَّا أَتَيْنَكَ بِالْحَقِّ وَأَحْسَنَ تَفْسِيرًا Except that we will bring the haqq and even better explanation. This is not for the kufar of Quraysh, this is to the Day of Judgment. This book is, لَإِنْ اجْتَمَعَتِ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لَا يَأْتُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ If the people and the spirits will gather to bring something like this book, they will not be able to. That is because this book is special. This book has every covered everything. وَنَزَّلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ تِبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ We have revealed to you the book to cover everything, to explain everything. Hmm? The book of the book, this book, which and when we refer to the book, is not Quran only. The book is Quran and Sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. <coughs> well, if, 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 at any time when I say something, I can't be just go from one subject to another. Every time I say something, if you don't agree, including you, uh, then what you do is tell me, we don't agree about this, or uh, can you explain why did you say this? Okay, so the Quran and Sunnah is the book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to the Prophet. This book is, the Prophet said, I have been given the eloquence of speech. What is eloquence, eloquence of speech? The ability of to give such statements, like an ayah that you can use in a thousands of matters. That Allah doesn't burden any uh, soul except what we, Allah has given it. You understand? This ayah, you, will, you use it everywhere. Can you just talk, please? It's not 41. Ayat right, number 41 that talks about the dhikr being in the kitab. Well, it's not a question about uh, if, if you agree that the fact that the Quran is there. Yeah, but you, you don't think of, on, on behalf of other people. Just if you agree with it, that's fine. If someone has an issue, you can ask that, okay, I don't agree about this, and then I will answer it. So here, the Quran, <coughs> when you tell me there is a, a white, if someone comes to me and tell me, uh, okay, we do ishtihad, there is some kind of liquids or a drugs the Prophet have never mentioned. Is it haram or not? There are matters that come new, huh? cigarettes, the Prophet never saw them. No, everything is covered. Everything that you think of is covered in Quran and Sunnah. If you tell me there is a white liquid or whatever you are saying, I will say, does Forget about the formula, the, the chemical formula. Huh? Forget about this. Tell me, when a person drink this, does it make him intoxicated? Meaning that he will not know what he is doing, what he is saying. If it does, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, call it khamr. And called the, the Allah subhanahu says in the Quran, Ya ayyuladhina amanu la taqrabu salata wa antum sukara hatta ta'lamu ma taqulun. Don't approach the prayer while in state of intoxication until you know what you are saying. If you don't know what you are saying, then you are in, you are in state of intoxication. Now, the Prophet have given a definition to this. Kullu muskirin khamr. He was asked about two drinks. One made of uh, honey and another made of not oh. barley, it's something else, uh, corn flour, no, it's the, the, the popcorn, what do I, sweet corn. And he said this, he said this answer, Kullu muskirin khamr. Every intoxication is khamr, and even khamr is haram. So, 
Don't tell me your form, chemical formula. Just tell me, is this drink that you are referring to? When you drink it, does it make you uh, intoxicated? Whether you drink a lot or you drink small, uh, just a little, does it make you intoxicated? If it does, then the Prophet said it's, it's, he called it khamr. And if it's khamr, then it's haram. And he didn't say if you drink it, so that goes for hashish, that goes for uh, drugs, that goes for anything, anything that makes you intoxicated, you have to keep refrain from taking it. It will be khamr, and you have to keep away from it. Not haram only to, to drink it or to use it. You have to destroy it. Fetch tanibu, keep away from it all the way. Fine, but I agree with you. I okay. mean, the first point that you're saying is I absolutely agree with you when you say that everybody is obliged to make ishtihad to the best of their ability. Yes. Because on day judgment, Allah is going to account you as an individual, yeah. not what I follow Abu Bakr or what I follow Abu Hanifa. Okay. Allah is going to ask, what did you do? How okay. did you come to this decision? Okay. I agree with that. Now, you, you, you've just given the example of somebody who's tested out this liquid, does it make them intoxicated? No, it doesn't. So essentially what they've done is that they've tested out this waka, they have examined the reality, mm. and they've said, it doesn't make me drunk. Mm. And they've looked at the clear cut text from the hadith that you quoted, yeah. and the Quran, yeah. um, and all the other evidence is about anything which is intoxicating, yeah. and they've come out with the ahkam, they've yeah. made ishtihad. Yeah. So that essentially is the process of ishtihad. Well, this is... Uh, and from the hadith, which also talks about... Who, uh, when we are talking about ishtihad, if this is what you call ishtihad, that's fine. Yeah. This is what I'm calling ishtihad. And if everybody... Can you say, tell me that some people are allowed to do this and some people are not allowed to do this? Everyone's allowed to do this. Thank you. That's all what we are talking about. Well, so, the hadith, which talks about when the Prophet Sallallahu approached the Sahaba, I think there's several narrations, correct me if I'm wrong, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi asked... Um, if there is a matter, what would you consult? And he said, I will consult the Book of Allah. And if the answer is not the Book of Allah, I will refer to the Sunnah. And yeah. if it's not the Sunnah, I will use my best judgment. Yeah. Could that you expand hadith, a little bit on that hadith? Yeah. That hadith is the hadith of Mu'ad ibn Jabal, which is narrated by Tirmidhi. Tirmidhi, after narrating this hadith, he said, This hadith, عندي ليس بمتصل. To me, this hadith is broken. When Tirmidhi say this hadith to me is broken, he is saying this hadith to me is weak. Bukhari said about this hadith, this hadith, al-asah, al-sahih, and the, the hadith is to be, the, is not sahih, is morsel. Morsel, according to Bukhari, is da'if. This hadith is by the, Ibn Hazm say is invalid, batil. Uh, the Sahaba, uh, among, uh, who else? Daraqutni say this hadith is weak. Uh, Ibn Tahir say this hadith is weak. Ibn Qattan say this hadith is weak. Hafiz al-Iraqi say this hadith is weak. Dhahabi say this hadith is weak. Ibn Hajar say this hadith is weak. When answering to Imam al-Haramayn. You will find this in their books. Uh, Anyone that says it's, that is sahih? Yeah, Ibn Qayyim say this hadith is sahih. But Ibn Qayyim really you don't rely on Ibn Qayyim when it comes to Ibn Qayyim says it, Al Ghazali says it, Imam Al Haramain says it, Al Amidi says it, and some of them they don't only say this. Some of them say this hadith is mutawatir, you know, against Bukhari and Daraqutni, and they will explain to you why this hadith is da'if. This hadith is the narration of uh, Al Harith ibn Amr. And as uh, Ibn Hazm put it, he says Al Harith ibn Amr ibn Akhi al Mughira. Nobody amongst the, 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 the creation of Allah knows who he is. <laughs> Hadith, you understand? From a group of people, of the uh, companions of Mu'ad. Group of the companions of Mu'ad. Allah knows who are they. You understand? This hadith should be da'if, inanimously. Even though this group of people, Ibn Al-Qayyim, uh, Al try to say, uh, because there are so many, then they are not majhul, one will like help the other. He doesn't know that Al-Harith ibn, Al ibn Amr, he can, I mean, when you hear a hadith from three people who are sitting in the same place, you can refer it to them. You can say, three, these people told me, group of people told me. This hadith is da'if, and is not even, according to Shu'bah, 
Shu'ba and he's the best narrator, they say, they say this hadith is even more sad. I mean, even this group of people who narrated it, they didn't narrate it from Mu'adh. They can't even, uh, do they refer to even an individual from the group? Or there's not no, no, there is no name, but these people, they narrated it like this. They say, they didn't say Mu'adh told us, this is the Sahih, huh? which is the, 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 the correct narration. Correct narration mean, doesn't mean it's correct hadith. Correct narration that they didn't say Mu'adh told us. They said, the Prophet told Mu'adh, who told you? Even the group of people, even the, the, the this hadith is uh, considered sahih by Imam al-Haramayn. And he, actually he made, he didn't only, Imam al-Haramayn, the Ghazali and the Amidi. And these people are more philosopher than really muhaddithin. You understand? And some of them actually say this hadith is in the Sahih. You understand? And the Habi, when he answered to Imam al-Harma, he said, where is Sahih? How can hadith like this to be Sahih? You understand? So this hadith is weak because of these reasons. And they all use the same justification, it's the same argument that it's from the group of Muhammad. This is, this is the hadith that you will find that the books that people rely on, on Usul Fiqh, using this hadith and referring this hadith, some of them referring this hadith, they say this hadith is in Bukhari, some of them say this hadith is mutawatir. And if you say Bukhari, as they say, when Bukhari hears that this hadith is mutawatir, they, they will be turning in his grave. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> that if you go, any muhaddith, tell him this hadith is mutawatir or hadith sahih or the ummah has accepted this hadith, which ummah? Imam al Haramain and Ghazali and uh, Al Amidi. Just go and, go and read their, 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 their biography. You understand? There's no other similar hadith like this? No, there is no similar hadith. This is the hadith that people rely on. And this is what has been said about this hadith. I told you the people who consider this hadith to be life. I mean, Bukhari, Tirmidhi, I don't say, if another time I say Bukhari says something, but I don't take it. Don't tell me, ah, oh, but you were. No, Bukhari is very good muhaddith. If Bukhari say about hadith is sahih, you have to think too much, hmm? a lot, before dismissing his saying. If he says the opposite also, you understand? But it doesn't mean that he gets it right all the time. But here, I told you, when I told you, Bukhari said and Tirmidhi said and Darakotni said and Ibn Hazm said, now if you want to argue this matter, I am happy to listen to what you are going to say. I told you why they said it and why we have to agree with them. Because this hadith is, as Ibn Hazm said, not in the mustalah, but it should be invalid. Huh? Such hadith, so important hadith that like put, puts the dots in their places. Huh? Who is narrated by a group of people from people from Hamza and Al Harith ibn Akhi al Mughira. Yeah, so it just happened to slip through the net over the generations and people have yeah, just he, used he, it. He, no. Even Mastery He's, says it's weak. No, this hadith is, is weak, should be, stay weak. So there is officially no no formalized methodology on the process of Ishtihad. This is how the Prophet... People differ in their opinions whether the Prophet... Now, if the Prophet didn't have the right to do Ishtihad, then nobody should. But he is a prophet, he received revelation. Yeah, he received revelation, but sometimes he will wait. And Bukhari actually he has put a chapter about this. That the prophet, when he used to be asked questions, he will wait until the revelation comes. And he doesn't just look what is the nearest thing or, you understand? He will wait, he doesn't answer. Can't you do exactly? The same thing, someone comes and asks you a question, you just wait. The Prophet was, wait, yeah, tell him to me, I don't have an answer right now. Wait until I find fit for you, I will have, co I contact people, or this is your obligation, you need the question, you go and find it. Why do you have to take the burden of other people? Why do you have to lie about Allah for the sake of other people? Will this person help you when you say, Tell him this is haram or this is halal, just like this, with your desire. I mean, this is the Prophet, this is question, uh, hadith that is in Bukhari. The Prophet was asked a question about mirath. This is not a question about halal haram. Halal and haram is always easy. Halal and haram, I mean, uh, anyone in the Quran and Sunnah, if someone asks you a question, is halal or haram, the answer is there. 
it is halal until proven haram. So if you don't find that it is haram, you will say, okay, do it, it's halal, unless you find some haram later. But sometimes it's not a question of halal haram. You have to give inheritance to people when someone has died. How to divide it? This is not a question of halal and haram. Now the Prophet was, questions like this were put to the Prophet, he will wait. He went to visit Jabir and he was sick and he said, I am going, to, I prob might die, how should I divide my inheritance? The Prophet didn't answer until the ayah was revealed. Can't you do the same thing? If you don't know exactly for sure how to divide the inheritance. So the Prophet was waiting and if he does ishtihad, he could have done ishtihad here. Just until the wahi comes, but he didn't. There is a hadith in Bukhari as well. The hadith that the, a man asked the Prophet about horses. He says horses are three types. For a man, it is an ajr, reward. That is for the man who uses it for the sake of Allah. For a man is a cover. This is a person who uses it as a business to cover himself from asking for charity. And uh, this person here, uh, the Prophet said, as long as he doesn't forget the right of Allah in their next, for uh, meaning giving charity from what he, from the profit that he makes. And for a man, it is a, a wizard, it is a sin for a man. This is a man who have these horses to use them against Islam and as a way of pride. The man asked him, what about donkeys? Now, any, every intelligent person, every, every, any very intelligent person who has been studying the fiqh and qiyas will not wait a second before he says, are you stupid? What is the difference between a donkey and a horse? I mean, people have made a horse haram because donkey is haram using qiyas. But as people like us, stupid, we don't know these matters, we will say, no, there is nothing we, we don't know. But see, how did the Prophet react to this? Did, he, did the Prophet use what these clever people do? He said, nothing has been revealed to me regarding the donkeys. This is how the Prophet, he doesn't do ishtihad, that kind of ishtihad. His ishtihad is to wait for the revelation. He can't go and seek it. And he has the most, uh, he is the best to understand. No one can understand better than the Prophet. It's not just it makes sense. It's because he said it. You see, if he didn't say it, we will think about it. We will see, is it, if he is or not. But he said, so the matter is solved. He said that I am, inni a'lamukum. I am the most knowledgeable, knowledgeable about, amongst you. So, whatever he says, don't think about it. Why? Where he got it from? You've mentioned that everyone is much here, but I'm going to refer back to the the, why, the general understanding of mushtahid. Now. Yes. So if we look at people like Ashafi, yeah, um, Mal Malik, and yeah. all the classical scholars, yeah, they generally tend to put a prerequisite for what a mushtahid needs to know, as a minimum. So, for example, if, if, Arabic language... If you tell me their followers have done this, yeah. Shafi'i probably he has spoken about, but uh, the but, other... I mean, in, in Shafi'i's Rasala, he mentions... Yeah. He, he talks about the state of the Ummah at the time, of yeah. this time, on how we the Arabic language has become. Yeah. Obviously, if he looks at the Arabic today, and he listens to Amr Diab and all these people, it's, it's completely... It's, it's gone. Amr Khal, you mean? Well, I'm talking the music and all these, you know, the okay. way on how the language has completely... It's not even Arabic, okay. according to the Fusha. Okay. So, when you look at... Um, so, when you're referring to um, the non-Arabic speaking world, and even the Arabs who don't know the Fusha, they just know the slang or the colloquial Arabic, yeah. how are they able to refer to the Book of Allah? There are some people today, it was easier for Shafi'i to... Uh, understand Arabic. He understood Arabic. There was many words that Shafi'i would have struggled to know. And he will go to the people who are like specialists in this field. 
these books are protected and actually they are more available for us than it was for him he would have to go and contact and travel and to well, check about the world. For example, myself, These books I'm, are here. Not Arabs. I'm, yeah, if, if you are not Arabs, you have to fear Allah and not talk about. You don't put this the, the, this ishtihad away from. We have spoken about many matters, and these matters you have to put them all together. The way we say when you take a religion, you don't take one ayah and leave another ayah. You have to fear Allah and not talk about the things that you don't know. That goes for you and goes for Shafi'i. It goes for everybody. You understand? So if. Today, even though you are not speaking Arabic, you go and open a book and read the matter, and you read it properly, and you find every word in Arabic that speaks about this matter, then you have the right to talk about this. But I'm not referring to Allah's messenger, I'm referring to the interpretation of somebody interpreting. No, it's not Allah's somebody, messenger. and somebody, when you take Quran and you open the translation of Yusuf Ali. Uh, you are referring to Yusuf Ali here. Yeah? That's not the reason, that's, not that's true. That is the translation. But the Arabic language that Allah has sent the Quran with, that Arabic language is protected. The way the Quran is protected. The Quran will not be protected without Arabic language being protected. And we have these books, the books of uh, Sa'id bin Aws al-Nahwi, al-Asma'i, the books of Tha'lab, the books of Al-Akhmash, Al-Akhmash, Ibn Mandur, Al-Azhari, all these books Abu Ubaid al-Qasim ibn Salam, ibn al-Arabi, all these books are there. They have mentioned the words, the meaning of, their word, of the words. All you have to do is now that when you have studied Arabic to a certain level, there will, you will come across some words that you don't know the meaning of. You just go to these books, find them, and then here you are, like you, like Shafi'i. If, of course, when you reach a certain level of Arabic. There are some people today in the University of Azhar, Darawan, in the University of... who have studied Arabic to such level, you can't compare Abu Hanifa or Shafi'i or Malik to them. I mean, we know that Abu Hanifa, for example, he was not an Arabic speaker. If you just go into his biography, uh, you will find he knew enough Arabic to understand, I mean generally. But there are some words that he will have to struggle to find them. You understand? And this Arabic language, you can, you can acquire it. You can just go to, to any university, live in an Arab country, it will help you. Two years, three years, then you will be okay. But till I get to that level, until you get to that I'm level, I'm referring to men. I'm yes. referring to yes. the so, and that is your ishtihad. So my ishtihad. And that is your ishtihad then. So it's far to learn Arabic. No, it's not far to. If I say it's far to learn Arabic, I will say it is far for everybody to be uh, to be to to learn the whole religion. I don't say that everybody has. Everybody must learn the whole religion. Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, وَمَا كَانَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لِيَنْفِرُوا كَافًا The believers, I know that there is a different interpretation here, which probably he should choose to, to take. And if you don't agree with my interpretation, which is not mine, it is the interpretation of other Mufassirin, then Allah subhanahu wa says, وَمَا كَانَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ لِيَنْفِرُوا كَافًا the, the believers, don't have to go forth all together. The believers, and it is not proper for the believers to go out to fight forth. It doesn't say to fight. Nifar is not, but his fight is such special place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, someone who goes there, is more likely to learn. This is known to people who have been there. So, and it is not proper for the believers to go out to fight all together. Of every troop of them, a party only should go forth. Okay? So, of every troop of them, a party only should go forth, that they may get instruction in religion, and that they may warn their people when they return to them. So it is not an obligation for everybody to seek knowledge. But it is... Uh, an obligation for everybody to seek the knowledge that he needs. 
you don't have to be as long as there is enough people to teach those who don't know then all you have to know is your prayer your zakat when you have enough money to pay zakat for this you have to do your utmost it's just because you have time and you want to spend it playing station or a playstation or no it's not enough you have to go to the bone of what the matter that you are looking for that you concerns you as long as there is enough people in the world or in the area where you are with the people you live amongst enough people to teach them the religion if not then it's an obligation on you and everybody to go and seek knowledge just to her to well, there are one or two hadith I want to ask, mm. uh, if you can shed some light on it. Okay. Um, it is narrated that the scholars are the inheritors of the Prophet, number one. Okay, mm. and number two, um, when Muhammad Sallallahu was asked by his Sahabi in a gathering, uh, O Prophet, uh, who are the good people? Yeah. And the Prophet said, Allah wal umara, the scholars. Yes, yeah. and then then they asked, well, "Oh, Prophet, who are the bad people?" Who? Mm. And he said, "Al ulama wal umara." Mm. Um, and the conclusion of the hadith that the yeah. Prophet said was, "If the scholars and the leaders are good, then yes. everything is good, and if yeah. the scholars and the leaders are bad, yeah, everything becomes bad." So if you could yeah. just now, the when there is a hadith that there is no argument about it to be weak, then we don't have to spend time in it. If the hadith like people have said it's sahih, then we have to explain why we disagree. The second hadith that you mentioned is weak, inanimously, almost inanimously. When we say inanimously, we are talking referring to the big core of hadith. The scholars and the leaders? Yes. Okay. So, uh, therefore, you don't have to spend time thinking about it because it comes from a narration which is more sell and it comes from a narration where it is Dawud ibn al-Muhabbir and uh, other narrations. Could you explain in which books of hadith then they're, they're documented in, and who are and who uses these hadith, and who are the proponents and proponents yeah, find it, find it, because it's so weak. Huh? These books you don't find it in Musnad al firdaus You will find it as well in Tariq of Baghdad, and there are other books that mention it. But uh, I don't know all the sources, of course. From. I remember that there is a narration from Dawood bin Muhabbir, who is uh, considered to be a liar. And there is another narration which is uh, just maqtu'ah, hadith maqtu'ah, actually. It makes it the saying rather than the hadith of the Prophet is saying of a tabi. You understand? So that is one hadith. The other hadith which is people have different opinion about, which is the hadith of Abu Darda, the second hadith about the ulama warathatul anbiya the ulama are the inheritors of the prophets this is the hadith that ibn uh, hajar says some people consider it to be ضعيف and they think he should have said some people consider it to be sahih it's more likely this hadith is the narration of asim ibn raja ibn hayawa who, despite some people grading him to be like, okay, this is what I remember from this man. I don't remember anyone saying, anyone recognized person of hadith who said he is thiqa. But I remember that Abu Zur'a said he is okay, and Nasa'i saying he is okay. Okay is not good enough. From Dawood bin Jamil. Okay, because he hasn't got the retentive memory, or because he... Well, it is not that much known. Okay. From Dawood bin Jamil, who is Majhul. Majhul because nobody has said anything about him good. From Kathir bin Qais, who is Majhul as well, or Da'if. It's another, uh, this is what Tarakutani says about Dawood bin Jamil. He said him and people above him, like him and Kathir bin Qais, are majhul. In another narration, he said he is weak. And you won't find a statement that contradicts this from someone like, like Dara Khutani. 
you understand? So this hadith will be weak for this reason. Because of As Asim ibn Raja ibn Hayawa, who narrated from Dawud ibn Jamil, from Kathir ibn Qais actually, or Qais ibn Kathir. Even uh, Tirmidhi, when he narrated this hadith, he says, this to me is a mistake. This hadith is narrated by uh, Tirmidhi and Abu Dawud. Now, if this hadith was sahih, which is not, the hadith is not sahih. If this hadith is sahih, you remember the ayah that I said earlier? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Indeed, those who are fear Allah are the ulama. Now, after this ayah, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after a few ayah, that is number 28 in Surah Fatr, number 32 says this, then we gave the book in inheritance. What is knowledge? The book. Quran and Sunnah. Okay, let's see who are these people, the ulama that Allah, if the hadith was sahih, who are these ulama who have been given the book as inheritance? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then we gave the book as inheritance to such of our slaves whom we chose. We choose. Then of them are some who wrong themselves and of them are some who follow a middle course, and of them are some who are, by Allah, live foremost in good deeds. That inheritance of the Qur'an, that is indeed the great grace. So every Muslim is a ulama. Well, that's killed it there, you know? <laughs> So, uh, this is uh, the, the, the hadith, of course, is da'if. So, uh, yeah. Any, anything, any other questions regarding? I mean, my only question would be, if someone was, when you say the book is the Quran and Sunnah, yeah. some may wonder, okay, where does it say, because you've explained the zikr, yeah. you said the zikr, the Sunnah explains the Quran, Yeah. now if you show that the zikr is the kitab from Surah Al-Fusilat, that may give a more of a comprehensive what the book is. So when you ever say book... I say it, just ask me a question if you don't know something. Only. If something that you know, you don't have to worry about what other people might think. The book in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he says dhikr, is the dhikr. We have sent down the dhikr to you, so you might explain to people what has been revealed to them. This is the uh, so th th the sunnah here is the dhikr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says inna alladheena kafaru bil dhikri lamma ja'ahum those who disbelieve in the dhikr after it came to them wa innahu la kitabun aziz and it is indeed a book which is <coughs> aziz so the, the dhikr is a book. The, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now if you say uh, there are hadiths from the Prophet, I think some of you might think about hadith where the Prophet says book. Like for example, the Prophet when he, taught, when he hugged Ibn Abbas and said, Allahumma allimhu al-kitab, who Allah teach him the book. Did he mean, who Allah teach him the Quran, don't teach him the Sunnah? When uh, the Prophet said, every condition that is not in the book of Allah is invalid. Why? Everybody says that any condition that is in the Sunnah is valid. That is because the book, the Sunnah of the Prophet is a book. It should be a book. Even the books that has been revealed to the, book, to the Prophets before us, when the writing was even more difficult, not many people, Allah referred to them as Zubur, wa innahu lafi Zubur al awwalin the books of the previous, Suhaf Ibrahim wa Musa. Everything that comes from Allah is there, everything that comes from Allah is a book. And it is protected. Why? That part, you've, is, I agree hmm. uh, about the vicar. I just want to go straight back to the issue on Ishtihad. Yeah. Um, I get the, I'm told that Ishtihad, historically, 
is derived from the Shia uh, in terms of as a term. No, actually, is that a, true? Actually, actually, this is what yes, this is what the uh, just from the historical what, perspective. Yes, this is what they say. Taqlid, one that Ahl Sunnah uh, agreed to uh, not agree really. It will be a lie. But when we, the majority of people that we know of, like, used to call themselves names, like, there was time when if you have no title, Hanbali or Hanafi or Shafi'i or Maliki, you are not even allowed to talk. You can see that a time came. When was that time, uh, roughly? Well, do you know which madhab was Ahmed bin, uh, bin Taymiyyah? From the Hanbali, I'm a yeah. Bin Qayyim? Same. Ibn Kathir? Well, he was a student, but whether he is... Shafi'i. Scholar. Yeah. Fahabi. Yeah. Shafi'i. Ibn Abdul Hadi. Hanbali. Ibn Nawawi. Shafi'i. Al Aziz bin Abdul Salam. Shafi'i. These people are in the same like, time. Now, when these people... Uh, at, at one point, you have to have a, man, a madhab, or, and some people, even though probably they don't agree with it, for a greater uh, thing, like, you understand? Uh, there is a, what we say, noble cause. Okay, let's just take this name, even though it's really not here, it's not the case, because Noah was Shafi. <laughs> and Nukathir uh, uh, was Shafi. I mean, not that bad, but he was Shafi. Lutemia was Hanbali, Ibn Qayyim was Hanbali, even though they go, they go against the, the Madhab. Uh, not like the Habi, the Habi was more. But people, it looks like these people have believed in such thing, even though they were still close to the time where the books are there, where the opinions are there. But they made it look, by adopting the name, like there is for Madhab. There, there is no for Madhab. Shouldn't be for Madhab. Shouldn't be any Madhab. You understand? Now, at that time, and you know the Shia, at one point, the Shia used to live with the Sunnis side by side. I mean, um, in the Khilafah of Bani al-Abbas, there was Qadaris, there was Khawarij, there is uh, Murji'a, there is, there is all this Mu'tazila. It was not an issue, a big issue. The, 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 the Madhab which made this a big issue, of course, Going against the hukum of Allah is, is, is haram. But these people who are as well mujtahid. Qadari, if someone says Qadari is out of the ummah or we shouldn't listen to him or Qatada, take Qatada from Bukhari and part of the religion is gone. I mean, in, in Bukhari, take the, the, the Qadaris, take the Shia, Amish, uh, take the Khawarij, take, and part of the religion is gone. Because these people, have the, they, they, they are mujtahid. They believed in something. And they have, they are wrong. We don't follow them in their mistakes. Other than that, they have all our respect. There is nothing different. You can never point the finger, for example, to Ibn Siri, who is not known to have any issue. Like, he is not Mu'tazila, he is not Khawarij, he is not Murji'ah, he is not... But you can't say Ibn Sirin is better than Qatada, except in, in, in matters of, okay, he's not Mudallis or he has more, better memory. When it comes to matter of the religion, no. You understand? So okay. when did it all come about then, this issue of Muqallid Mushtahid? When this issue Mad came amongst the, the Muslims about the, uh, the, 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 what happened is... In the Abbasi period. The, the Abbasi period, it was like people became bad people you can't trust people, you can't trust the judges, so they put this rule. If you say something, if you judge in a, in a way, you have to show where it came from, and then uh, it was narrowed from the, the Salaf. So it started with Salaf having uh, Sufyan Thawri, Awza'i, Layth ibn Sa'd, all these were madahib. But it, it's uh, every time like someone has no followers, has no... And those who had followers, like Abu Hanifa, why the Abu Hanifa Madhab was expanded that much? 
because the leader of the judges of the Khilafah, Abu Yusuf, yeah, no, Abu Yusuf, he was the leader of the judges, what they call him Qadi Qudat. I mean, if you want to become a judge in the Khilafah of Ibn Abbas, you have to please Abu Yusuf. How you please him? By adopting the same way of his understanding. So now when this happened and the Shia were by uh, leaving there as well, of course they didn't have their follow ulama never told them about uh, stopping doing ishtihad. So they went. Of course they liked to go against Ahl Sunnah and we are talking now about a new kind of Shia. The Shia have developed them. It's not the same Shia as before, as the Amish and the Shia that we have now are were more dangerous uh, in their belief. They believe some new things, uh, not uh, as, as bad as today, but still, to the point that they helped the Tatar uh, overcome the Khilafah. These people then, they came, the, the, this uh, Ahl Sunnah became the Muqallid, and the Shia, the Mujtahid, they do Ijtihad. This is the issue about Ijtihad between... Uh, okay, then now if you go for example, a country like Pakistan, <laughs> they will say, yeah, if you say Ijtihad, oh, you are Shia. You understand? No, that's where I got it from. Yeah. I met some people and they were saying, I'm so slow about Ijtihad, they were saying, well... Are you Shia? Are you Shia? Yeah. Oh, that's the Shia understanding. Yeah. We don't really accept that. Yeah. We don't accept anything that Shia said. If someone tells you that is Shia said, we don't accept it. Tell him, yeah, the Shia say la ilaha illallah. Just, you understand? Uh, you don't, you don't reject, we reject things after we, uh, we study something and uh, we look at the Dalil, proof, Quran and Sunnah. We don't take things just because some people have taken them and we don't reject things that because some people that we don't like or we don't agree with have taken them. Can I just take this? No. Or yes? Maikum salam I'm busy in the middle of something. Yeah. Is is it any is it another question so give us your final thoughts. <laughs> mm. I mean, if, if you just want to summarize. Well, there is not really anything to summarize here. This is uh, the uh, ulama, is, uh, all the Muslims are ulama. All the is ulama. Hmm? It's like when we say, everybody is a believer, mu'min. But when someone points to himself and say, I am a alim. Or people point to him and say, this is a alim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, the alim is the one who fears Allah, that is his tazkiyah, is uh, uh, about praising someone, praising someone is haram in the religion, it is haram to praise anyone, except that those that Allah has praised, and those are known people, uh, Umar, Abu Bakr, Uthman, Ali, those who are in Jannah, definitely. So if I have a friend, um, and not Allah, he, I, you know, in... I just praise him when he's not in my presence to another brother. Is that okay? It is haram to praise him in matter of his religion. In religion, right. Okay. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Don't praise yourselves. He knows better who fears him. So the matter is about taqwa. If you say this person is fat or this person is skinny, and you won't praise him for that, or this person is rich, or this person is very good in mathematics, so... Now, mashallah, he has a very good mind to retain good hadith, a lot of hadith. That is not, memorizing memory, it doesn't, it's not, has nothing to do with taqwa. People can memorize and have nothing to, to do with religion. You understand? This question of, this person is good, meaning is, fears Allah. That is something you can never say about someone. It's haram. Because Allah said, لا تزكوا أنفسكم Don't praise yourselves. هو أعلم بمن اتقى He knows better who fears him. You know when you said about the ayat that uh, those, uh, if you do not know, how is the word when you return to it? فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون okay. If you don't know, then ask those who, uh, uh, ask the people of dhikr if you don't know. So if we say 
we do the mafu makharif, yeah? If we do know, then we don't go to Ahl al-Dhikr. No, it's so not, we, can't we are not doing mafhum mukhalafah here. If I have to understand mafhum mukhalafah, we say this, we don't take mafhum mukhalafah at all. Okay. If you ask Ahl al-Dhikr in Kuntum la ta'alamun, it doesn't mean don't ask Ahl al-Dhikr in Kuntum ta'alamun. It doesn't mean this. If we, if we take mafhum mukhalafah, we will say it is forbidden to ask people if you know. No, if you don't know, if you, if you don't know, you have to ask. This is the order. If you don't know, uh, but, but if you know, then it's your business. If you want to waste your time asking other people, it's your, it's your business. There is nothing to say if you, what, what you should do if you know. Do you get it? Yes. Well, everything, every action that a person does is halal. وَاللَّهُ خَلَقَكُمْ وَمَا تَعْمَلُونَ فَقَدْ فَصْلُ وَقَدْ فَصْلَ لَكُمْ مَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ So Allah has told us everything, in, uh, explained to us everything in details. What we should do, what we, what we shouldn't do. What we should do, then everything is left, you can do it. If Allah didn't say, don't do it. So, I understand what, what you mean here, because the, the people who have not studied Mufumu Khalafa will not understand this. But, uh, yes, there is no Mufumu Khalafa to be used here. Mufumu Khalafa is always to take something the opposite of understanding and use it to uh, where there is a specific hadith or specific ayah and try to harmonize between them there is no harmonizing in there in that case Thank okay you very much. okay i'll see you next week